In my last video, I did an HD video connector shootout and I fell in love with the DIN 1.0 2.3 connector. It is perfect for my purposes, both mechanically and electrically. It's rated up to multiple gigahertz and this little push-pull lock uh, keeps the cable solid, but with a quick pull here, it comes off great. So it's small form factor, perfect for what I'm looking for, except for one little downside, which is that it's really, really expensive. Uh, the combination of these two connectors uh, with the cable here, I assembled these myself. Um, this is $50 worth of parts, just that piece here and this cable here. Uh, that's way too expensive to use dozens of these or hundreds of these potentially in hobby projects. So I went online and had a look around and found that there were suppliers on Alibaba. I've never bought anything from Alibaba, so I did some inquiries and I was able to find this little baggie here. This is a bag of 50 uh, DIN uh, plugs, jacks, sorry. And here we have a hundred cables. Uh, this was the minimum water quantity. Uh, this was 250 US dollars for these cables. They didn't actually make these cables. This is DIN to DIN. Um, smiley face. Um, and I just had a chat with them. Most of Alibaba seems to happen in the chat function. Um, and I said, sure, we'll make you some. And so the question is, are these guys good enough? Do they perform to standards acceptable for what I'm trying to do? So let's go over to the bench and check it out. This is interesting. Um, I have got the original board that I made and I put two of the cheaper connectors on this board with the same BNC connectors. And electrically, everything's okay. Here you can look at my VNA. I don't know if you can see that, but here we have the calibrated completely flat response from one megahertz to two gigahertz. If I swap this cable out, for one of the DIN ones, or one of the cheaper Chinese ones. I've tested five of these right now. And just give a sec for the VNA to catch up. Um, it's flat, it's pretty flat. It's, it's flat enough for me. I think the biggest dip here is around one and a half gigahertz where uh, 1.8 dB down, that's okay. Um, it's, it's perfectly fine from an electrical perspective. Um, I've tried combinations of, you know, my gold standard Amphenol American cable versus this cable on this board versus that board, and um, electrically everything's fine. But what I've been doing is unplugging and plugging them back in a lot um, while doing these tests, and I've noticed something weird. Let's get the VNA out of the way because we don't need it for this. These cables don't latch properly. Let's uh, show you what a good cable is supposed to do. So here is a, my known good cable. If I yank on it, it stays on the board. For this cable, it has that same sort of detent feeling when it goes in. And it's staying in there. I guess it's staying in on this one. Different cables perform differently. But the combination of the cheap cable and the cheap connector, whoop, off, off. Um, it was holding onto this one. Oh, there we go. It's just coming off now. It's coming off. That's not happening with this cable. It's only happening with this cable. Um, I tried to get my microscope set up so I could uh, show you what I'm finding, but I don't have a good camera rig for this microscope. Um, but hopefully we can zoom in here and get good enough picture quality. But they look pretty similar. Um, in terms of how they're constructed. Some of the obvious differences are, um, this is a fully crimped design. Um, so, I mean, I made these, so I know. Uh, you can see the hexagonal crimp marks here where I've crimped the outer ferrule to the shielding. And then there's an inner pin in here, which has a tiny little crimp, um, crimping that to the center conductor. This cable looks like that, um, but it's not. Uh, if you unscrew this little back guy, um, the center conductor is soldered to that pin. That's not the worst thing in the world. Like, that, that's actually fine. I mean, you've lost some shielding around there, but you've got this guy around here. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, I've actually done some destructive testing on these to try and work out why they're not holding on. 
And so this guy here met the angle grinder of Doom. And while it looks like that hexagonal flat pattern, I don't know if you can see that on here, that's actually just, I don't know whether it's hex stock or whether that's been cast. It's, it's really hard to tell with the finish on this metal. But that's not crimped on the outside, I don't believe. It might be a hex stock that's very slightly crimped. Um, but the interesting part is, um, you can see it better on... Here's another Alibaba DIN, but this is a DIN to, to BNC cable. This one um, has a really big distance. You have to pull it back to get it to unlatch. Um, on this Amphenol one, it's maybe only like a millimeter or two, but it does the trick. Um, on this one, you pull it pretty far back, and I, I really don't think you're going to be able to see this. But inside here, there are four, four, no, there are three ball bearings. And so when you pull this back, it allows the ball bearings to recess further back into the case, which means that they are not fully engaged on this little ball bearing ring here, which is what allows it to detach. So ball bearings is a good way to implement a ball bearing latch. That's what I assumed this guy has, and that's what I assumed this guy has. Uh, sorry, um, that's what I assumed the Amphenol one had. Um, this has, after meeting with the angle grinder of Doom, let me get some tweezers, it looks a lot like, if I can get this in focus at all, a snap ring. A snap ring with four prongs on it that looks like you know that characteristic look of uh, spring steel um, and I don't even know if it's hardened spring steel but I'm guessing it just deforms and doesn't hold on as well so electrically they're fine mechanically not so great what do I want to do about this after much pondering the verdict is in the question before I get to the verdict is is this worth the same as this well the answer is um, these guys are fine um, yeah they pull out more easily than they should I'm noticing on this random bundle that I grabbed from the pile not all of these little screw-on bits are on properly but okay um, yeah they pull out more easily than they should um, electrically they're, they're totally fine um, for the signals that I'm working with um, would I sell a product that included these cables or the Chinese cheap connectors? Absolutely not. Um, the surface finish, um, you know, is just not there. Uh, the coatings, that's, that's brass, not gold coated. Um, the knurling, like if you're done any machining, like you know a good knurl from a bad knurl. This is a, not a great knurl. This is a nice knurl. Um, you know, the fit and finish on this guy is just so much better. Tolerance stack-ups are a real thing. It's really expensive um, to get good tolerances. That's what you're paying for um, with a lot of mechanical components is, you know, any bozo can make a part plus or minus five thousandths of an inch to get plus or minus a tenth in quantities. Um, this is probably better tolerances than a tenth. Um, it's expensive, um, so you get what you pay for. Um, but for hobby projects, I will absolutely no regrets use these cables that are two dollars and fifty cents each. Um, in quantities of 100. I have no problems uh, using these guys, which are you know, a little under two bucks each, um, compared to 18 or $20 from DigiKey. Totally fine for my purposes, totally fine for playing around in the shop. But if I'm gonna sell something, you're gonna get a good cable, you're gonna get a good connector. Um, I want something that's gonna last a long time, something that's gonna hold on properly, something that's not gonna corrode, something that's just uh, not gonna fail in unexpected ways. Um, so anyway, quick video, uh, catch you all next time, see ya.